She's England's most capped player, Rachel Yankee. Just to give you an idea of her CV, she's played in 129 internationals. That's four more appearances in the record for the men's game. That's held by the former England goalkeeper, Peter Shilton. Rachel Yankee, very good morning to you. I mean, morning. how does it feel to have out, out capped Peter Shilton? <laughs> That's quite an achievement. It is, yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, you know, I didn't ever think that. I would be able to do that, but, but no, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. And also the way that you started playing football, because you started out as a child. <laughs> so, I mean, what drew you to the game? Um, I don't know, just, just that it was fun, um, really. I think everyone sort of at school and <clears throat> outside of school just sort of played football. It was just an easy kind of sport. It was quite accessible. You know, you just go down the local park or out mm. in the streets and someone would have a ball and then everyone would just start playing. So I just kind of joined in. But it's interesting as well because there is a story that when you were eight, you actually shaved off your hair, pretended <laughs> you were a boy, you called yourself Ray, <laughs> and that's how you got into playing for one of the local boys' teams. Is that correct? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing now, but um, yeah, at the time it, it seemed pretty normal. Um, yeah, th there was two boys that I grew up with, Michael and Lawrence, and they went to, to join a football team and I sort of tagged along and, and obviously, I, you know, I, I was a girl, so I, I sort of didn't fit in. So They didn't twig it when you actually cut your hair and called yourself Ray? Well, no, obviously Michael and Lawrence knew well, I knew was a girl, the yeah. Rest of it, the rest of the guys didn't. Yeah, no, not, not many of my teammates. Manager sort of knew, but he, he just figured that, you know, if I was good enough to play, um, I was good enough to play. It was only at, um, in a league game that the sort of, yeah, the committee sort of said that, you know, girls should be playing football. And that's when the, the boys, truth came so. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but were you actually playing better than the boys? Well, I was making the team, so you know, I was I was seen as one of the te team, so I, I wasn't any different. And I think that's what I liked—the fact that I was just being seen as a footballer. Mm. Um, you know, it wasn't sort of a girl or a boy; it was just a footballer, and that's what I wanted to be. So, when did you actually turn pro? Um, yeah, uh, well, when I went to, uh, well, I played for Mill Hill United, uh, which was again was a girls' team. So when I was ten, I, I joined them, mm. um, and and I stayed there till I was sixteen when I joined Arsenal. But Arsenal still wasn't wasn't professional. It was it was semi pro, and um, I was there, you know, for about six or seven seasons, and then I joined Fulham, and Fulham was full time pro, um, which I was there for three years. Um, mm. At the moment, it, the, the women's games got better, but. In my opinion, it's not the same as how it was at Fulham, where we were full-time pros. Yeah. Um, I'd say we're more semi-pro at the moment. But, but I mean, it's certainly changed in, in terms of the coverage mm, of women's football, because once upon a time, if you were lucky to even catch 30 seconds of a match <laughs> on the TV, you were lucky. And even then, a lot of women were complaining about the way the stories were written about by and described by television commentators, that it wasn't women's football, it was the ladies, the girls playing yeah. football. There were sexist comments about shower rooms and also the clothes they were wearing, that sort of thing. Yeah, they, they, there's been all that. I think it's, you know, this, the, the game is being seen differently now. Um, you know, obviously people are sort of respecting the game for, for what it is and it's a game of football and people are actually looking at the game and watching the skills and watching what the players have to offer and I think, you know, that that's, you know, that's testament to how hard we've sort of trained and, and everyone's you know, put the efforts in and mm. hopefully we'll reap the rewards and, you know, in, in years to come it will, it will keep improving. But do you, do you think, though, that, that um, certainly the United Kingdom, perhaps other parts of Europe, that we lag behind the Americans, for example, because, I mean, they've got an amazing team and certainly their players, I mean, they are serious sportsmen, well, sportswomen, mm. and they've got the pay to match as well to show that kudos. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, the difference between, obviously, the UK and America is that when you're, uh, you know, you, you're growing up, um, definitely, you know, all the people that I know growing up is that you're, you're kind of born into football and what you see and what you're, you're sort of bred into is, is the men's game. And that doesn't happen in, in America where obviously the sort of the top sports are, are more baseball and basketball mm. and American football. Um, here it's just football. So you're always trying to compete with a game that's, you know, at, at the top level, at the highest level. So I think it's difficult for women's football because people automatically refer to and, and try to compare you to the men's where really it's it's not going to be the same game because obviously mm. physically you know men and women are, are made differently so mm. you know if you're, if you're watching the men's game and then you watch a women's game of course it's going to be a bit slower because women naturally sure. don't run uh, as fast as men so I think people in this country 
always look at it in that way and that's why you have to look at it. yes it's the same game but, but there, there are differences sure. um, obvious differences but, I mean it's interesting as well though because you you must have noticed this that you know you, you're not just playing you're also coaching as well so you're nurturing if you like tomorrow's mm -hmm. talent but the fact that you've got more girls who are interested in playing football at school I mean that must make you feel so proud because you're a part of that movement yeah definitely I think you know that's um, it's so one of the things, I mean, I was never coached at school. There was never anyone that came into our school and did sort of coaching sessions. It was always the, you know, your lesson teacher would take PE and, you know, we did rounders and stuff like that. But we never really had anyone to teach us actual football. And I just think that, you know, to see a female coming in and, and coach football, it, it sends a message to the boys that, yes, girls, they can play. And the boys have... Um, a responsibility to allow the girls to play and actually help as well and it sends a message to the girls that you know why can't you go and play and yeah anything's possible yeah. Rachel Yankee we have to leave it there but thank you so much for taking the time no out problem. to talk to us about your career thank and you. uh, just to prepare us I guess for the World Cup as well thank you very much <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs>